Or times at me. We will oh, just okay. do it. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us again on this glorious day and how unfair that we have had the most stunning weather during this lockdown period. So I know that many, many of you have found this really stressful, it's tough, it's unfair, um, but I would just like to say thank you to many of those of you who have been in, in the parks over this weekend, really socially distancing and that is uh, very much appreciated. Uh, as an aside, can I say I'm also a member of the um, Devon and Somerset Fire Authority and there have been uh, an increase of, of, of fires. Uh, there has been some, um, some hundreds of acres that have been wrecked uh, in, across the country. So please, if you absolutely have to use a disposable barbecue, can you be really, really careful? The ground is tinder dry at the moment. But anyway, to get back to being a police and crime commissioner. <laughs> So we now enter our, our 10th week of living with, with these restrictions and I hope that you find the, these web chats can be useful in answering some of your questions. So today I'm joined by Sarah Crew, uh, Deputy Chief Constable. So before we start, is there anything that you'd just like to add? I think, as you've said, I'd really like to um, thank the public for their public spiritedness and their patience through these difficult times. Um, I'd like to thank the police officers and staff and all the key workers who've been helping us navigate them especially with the, um, when presented with the temptations of the weekend and the fine weather and a little bit more freedom. Yes, indeed. So we, we, as we say, we've had another bank holiday. The weather couldn't have been better. And it's definitely a test for all of us to, to continue following the government's uh, guidelines and advice. So Sarah, could you give us an overview of how, mm. the, um, of how people and the police are adhering, you know, following these regulations? Okay, um, so this probably was the first um, bank holiday weekend that we've had the slightly revised mm -hmm. regulations. Um, we had 837 um, reports of uh, breaches of the regulations reported to us. Um, we issued six fixed penalty notices. We made one arrest. Um, and that related to four separate incidents. So when you look at those figures, mm. you can actually see that the um, engage, explain, encourage message is really working. Um, those were about half the numbers of reports that we received in the bank holiday weekend before. All oh, right, so a big reduction. Uh, a, a big reduction and a big reduction in the need for enforcement as mm -hmm. well. So I see that as a really positive message. I think. Um, we see a sense of people enjoying extra freedom, but overwhelmingly the vast majority doing it so in a very responsible way, observing social distancing. Mm -hmm. um, so I thank the public for, for that. It's important to remember though we're still in an, a pandemic situation and it's still really important that we've all got a role in helping save lives and that's by being responsible in the way that we saw the public were this weekend. Yeah, yeah you're so, so right. So after, over the past few months, working with partners has become really, mm. it would never, it's never been so, imp mm. so important. So how have the police been working with health partners and in particular, mm. what is being done in response to the news mm. that Western General Hospital stopped accepting patients? Okay, um, well they're, they're very well um, rehearsed um, and well practiced ways in which we work with health and that's through something called the Local Resilience Forum. Um, it doesn't just contain the police and health, it contains other emergency services and, and public services as well. Um, the, the Local Resilience Forum has been meeting um, every week, um, sometimes several times a week, mm -hmm. since the crisis started. Um, public Health England are very much in the driving seat because this is a health crisis. Um, the role of the police and the other agencies there is to support them in helping the country find its way through it. So um, real practical ways that you will have seen us working to support that health effort um, in the provision of um, personal protective equipment, um, making sure that comes in, not just into policing, but into care homes, for example, um, but also in supporting coordination, supporting vulnerable people in communities to get supplies if they needed them. So the latest incident will be managed and is being managed in that same well-practiced partnership way um, through the, the established um, local resilience forums. Um, I know meetings have taken place today 
um, more meetings will take place in the coming days. So I do know that whilst Western General Hospital has been um, closed to new patients for a period of time, um, another colleague within the local resilience forum, the ambulance service, set up a triage system. Um, and there's also a triage system for any 999 calls as well. Okay. Um, so that people with health needs in the North Somerset area will find another service um, for them and for their needs without needing to um, go to Western General Hospital until the control measures that are in place there um, are completed. That's really helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for, for that. So as we come out of lockdown, um, it's certainly not, we're not going back to being totally normal. Mm. We will still have to socially distance. And, and, and we, we've talked about domestic mm. abuse before in the past, mm. but let me just focus on children and young mm. adults because there are some that are incredibly vulnerable. And well, how mm. are the pol what are the police doing to, to protect those? And if someone is listening mm. to this, what advice would you give? Okay, um, so there are lots of children that are obviously in homes, um, not going to school, mm. um, not really coming into contact with people they would normally come into contact with outside of the home. And unfortunately, we do think there probably are some very vulnerable children who are always very vulnerable, but are now less in touch with statutory agencies that may be able to help. Um, Safeguarding children is always a concern and a focus for us and it absolutely is in the here and now in these difficult situations. So we've been working with colleagues in local authority, the um, child safeguarding teams, but also the violence reductions units, um, but also with other colleagues in other um, uh, the, for, uh, um, places of work where they may come into contact with children, whether physically or not, um, to be able to look for the signs, be very alert, very, very curious. Every police officer is being very curious about every child they come into contact with. Um, and when they see signs, sharing information and acting upon it in mm -hmm. the way we would normally do. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also very conscious that as restrictions loosen, as children go back to school, as they come into contact with other people, there may be concerns that, that appear then. So we're working with those same partners to prepare so that we're not overwhelmed, um, so that we're able to and ready to respond and safeguard children and disrupt offenders when that happens. What I'd say to people who may have concerns is be alert and curious as we are. Mm -hmm. Ask the child if you can, just to get a sense themselves of whether they're able to tell you that something is happening. But if not, if you've still got that nagging doubt, there's always the um, ability to ring the police in an emergency 999, but otherwise 101. We will share that information with our other colleagues mm -hmm. who are also engaged in safeguarding children. But there are other routes as well. And I know the NSPCC mm -hmm. has a helpline that can also be incredibly useful as well if, if people don't feel that they want to call the police. Mm. Another sign of good partnership working, really. Mm, absolutely. So, there's also a fear that with children and young ad adults at home that they are spending more time online. Mm -hmm. So what advice can you give to parents or carers about what they can do to make their child safe online? Mm. Okay, I mean, and I think it's really important to say that it's also a lifeline for children yeah. at this time. It enables them to connect with their friends. It enables them to do their homeschooling as well. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the online world shouldn't be um, one to be banished from their lives, but it's really important that um, we make it safe for them. And there's a role for parents and carers in doing that. Um, the Child um, Exploitation and Online Protection Team, called CEOP, um, works within the National Crime Agency and I know for a fact that they've just launched a new online safety at home campaign which provides lots of informative tools for both parents but also for children um, to be able to help them understand how to keep safe online. So I would direct people to that online safety at home campaign that, that, that's just launched for those resources. Um, but there, there are um, other things that parents and, and carers can do, um, must do. Make sure you know um, that your children know that they need to be wary that people who present themselves in one way online may be very different. Mm. And also, they should be curious themselves about the people that young people are contacting online. Um, 
in terms of tips, um, the, for, the, the key tip for, for parents is around making sure that, um, that, that you've got the, the, the apps that your children are using are age appropriate for them, which you'll be able to see, but also that you've got the right parental controls in place and the right supervision. And again, lots of online resources, including the one that I just talked about, mm. help them to do that. In terms of young people, um, I, I, I've heard this kind of three-pronged tip um, that, that, that's often used. Um, so forgive my, my, my youth-appropriate language, but they zip it, which is um, keep stuff that youth want to keep private, private, don't talk about it online. Um, block it. If people send you nasty messages or you're not sure about them, block them. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, flag it. If you're concerned that something's happened, either to you or someone else, then flag it to someone, either your parents or carers, or there are ways of doing that online as well. And, um, and, and I know young people are very adept at knowing how to do that indeed, as well. Indeed. Uh, but, uh, you know, like with all things, it does have downsides, but the upsides of the schooling and the staying in contact with friends and is, is, is enormous. It's a lifeline to all of us at the moment. It's, you know, because it's, it's, young it's, people knew that before <laughs> and were utilising it before. It's so, so critical for them, but it's become very critical for all of us, I think. Thank you. And, and, and finally, there's one bit of clarity um, that mm. we've been asked for is that we can we can meet other people, um, you know, one other person mm. within uh, outside the household bubble, and we can sit in parks. Can we sit in the garden? Uh, the, the the rules are um, we can now meet one person from outside of our household, um, but that's in public open space, um, and so and maintaining social distancing of two meters as well. So public open space doesn't include the home and by the home I mean garden or outside space within the curtilage of the home. Um, the, the, the reasonable excuse we can have for visiting someone else's home is to protect a vulnerable person mm -hmm. um, and to, um, to supply medical supplies or to help maybe someone who needs help escaping a very dangerous situation. And we need to always remember that what we're trying to do is protect the NHS and, and, and also to keep us safe. That is the whole point of it, isn't it, really? It, it's, it's, it's to keep, we've all got a part to play in keeping people safe. Um, and it's to, if we're visiting someone else in their home, they're inevitably someone they're dear to us mm. because we want to see them. Um, and I think when they're dear to us, we need to take that extra care of saying it may, be ver it may feel okay, but there's real good reason for these government guidelines. So public open space is absolutely fine to meet one other person from outside of your household, maintain social distancing, but please keep that out of the home and the curtilage of the home. Thank you, thank you, Sarah. So we have come so far during these 10 weeks, you know, who would have believed we would be sitting here still 10 weeks on? But we, we mustn't throw away the benefit that we've had. So what Sarah said, you know, that social distancing is so important, mm -hmm. following, the, following the guidelines. And I think to be fair, I think the guidelines are going to become not more complex but more nuanced um, as the, when, when the government will announce some mm. later later this week that there'll be some shops open but we all have a, a personal responsibility to look after ourselves to look after our loved ones mm. and also to make sure that you know we don't put the nhs under pressure so we've come a long way with which i'd like to thank everyone for their patience compassion and tolerance because it's sometimes been very tough mm -hmm. um, but we we must keep on persevering so I hope you found uh, this afternoon useful um, and we will uh, get together in the next week or so for uh, answering some more of your questions so please stay safe goodbye <laughs>